Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derbe and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him on account of the Jews of that region. Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, he saw passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all, all the, the earth, earth cry out, out to God with joy. Sing joy, joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are, his people, the flock he tends. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. said to his disciples, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. <clears throat> if you belonged to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And I will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. Wow. So two things have been in my head ever since we took that famous trip to the Toyota dealer. Mm -hmm. Thursday? <coughs> and uh, I dropped you off 
no, uh, yeah, dropped you off, and I started to head back. And as I was on uh, 495, I guess it was, coming up to the exit there, I began to think to myself, this is the first time I've been out of the, I've been such a long distance. And then I got onto the Philadelphia Pike, and I was shocked, really, as I began to realize how few cars there were on the road. And it started to uh, make me think about the whys of it all. The whys of it all. Why uh, this pandemic? Why this pandemic? Why did the Lord uh, allow this <coughs> pandemic? I, I cannot say the Lord caused the pandemic. No, no, no absolutely, positively not. But what's, what's the message that the Lord is trying to send us in the signs of the times by this pandemic? I, that's really been a, a struggle that I've had. Because think of it, it's affected the whole world. And think of this, not only has it affected the whole world, it's gone level after level after level after level. It struck me last night when the first part of the news hour was devoted to the children. And it's <coughs> Karasaki, whatever, whatever they call it. And I kept thinking to myself, well, it, 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 it's exactly what Cuomo was saying. It, it knows. It's not selective at all as to who it's, it's everybody is affected by this thing. And I kept saying to myself, why, why, why? And then I started to think about the various pandemics, and I put that in quotation marks, that we read of in the Old Testament. Now, I, and I say with the Old Testament, the person I'm really that you see, I think, are the different levels that you see with Moses and Pharaoh. One right after the other, right after the other, right after the other, until the very last one is the firstborn. Yeah, no, firstborn. Clearly firstborn. Wow, you know. Then I thought about David. I remember David takes the census. I hadn't been done before. And and prophet comes to him and says, no, 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 you, you've done anything. Well, well, why a census? Why is Sprite come down for the census? Well, in their, their, their way of reckoning with all of that, it was to know how strong they were, how vibrant they were, that they were able to fight off all of these other enemies and so on and so forth. It was, it was Jerusalem first. Let's make Jerusalem the best. And I keep thinking to myself, is that what might be behind all of this? And I kept saying to myself, oh, oh, what is, what is this calling us to? That was the thing that I was, I was bothered by as I was driving on Silverside. What is it calling us all to? And the thought occurred to me that what, hey, what we claim is our strength, I think as Americans we boast of it, but I think those you know, other countries where it's a the boast of the, the, the power of cohesiveness that can be united, it, it can be close to one another. And those are the countries that seem to be really, really hit the hardest in this fight because we have to stay away from one another for a while. And to me, that's the most discouraging part about this whole thing, is that time gets longer and longer and longer and longer that we have to stay away from one another. And I keep saying to myself, oh, what, what are you trying to say to us? God, what are, you, what, what are you calling us to in all of this? And I think it's, it might be, it might be, to call us back to the secret of cohesiveness. The secret of cohesiveness. The secret of the spiritual life. Oh, you're talking, you're talking highfalutin terminology.
terminology. No, I'm not. The secret of what the Holy Spirit is all about is to bring us into one. As the Spirit brings the Father and the Son in one, so the Spirit brings us in one. It's a gift of baptism. And as I watch all of these people revolting and, and, and saying, no, 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 we need this now, we need our freedom now, give us the First Amendment now, give us the Second Amendment now, you know, they're ripping apart the very fabric of the United States. They're ripping apart the fabric of the unity because of what? Freedom. Freedom, give me a break. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We would come together naturally. We would appreciate our unity. Why? Because we appreciate the energy, the power of the Holy Spirit that's within all of us. That's really a challenge that we face. I really believe it's a challenge of maturity. That's what, I th that's what I think it is, more than anything else. It's coming to a mature faith. It, it came to me the other day when, when Cuomo was talking about the importance of wearing masks. You wear a mask not to protect yourself. You wear a mask to respect others. That's a different way of looking at it. A little tiny thing, like just that. To respect others. That, that maybe you have it and you don't know it. <coughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to spread it if you do have it. Imagine if they all did that. If we all did that. It would be a different world. But isn't that kind of symbolic or symbol, emblematic, really, in a certain sense of, of what life is all about? Maybe I have sinfulness inside of me. I don't want you to have it. Why? Because I respect you. And the wonder that's you the gift to the Holy Spirit that's in you, I respect that. And I, I, don't, I, I, I want to learn from that. It's a really powerful gospel, really, when you start thinking of it. I have chosen you out of the world. Here we are, out of the world. <laughs> and, and the challenge is probably greater for us as we live more intensely in this pressure cooker of, of 1901 prior road. I mean, here we are, you know. And as we rub elbows with one another, the challenge to show unity, to show to the world what we really believe in is the gift of the Holy Spirit that brings us together. That brings us together that is not part of the pandemic that would have us be divisive. And so we come here to this sacrament of unity, day after day after day after day. Here's where we find out what unity is all about. Here's where we find out where we find out what we're all about. And so on.